الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على سيد الأولين والآخرين سيدنا ومولانا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم رب أعوذ بك من همزات الشياطين وأعوذ بك رب أن يحضرون تبرأت من حولي وقوتي واعتصمت بحول الله وقوته فلا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and uh, welcome all to uh, this continuation of our series, Knowing Allah, Knowing Him Through His Divine Names. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى فَدْعُوهُ بِهَا And to Allah belong the beautiful names, so call Him by them. And we said last week, or two weeks ago rather, two weeks or last week? Two weeks ago, two weeks ago, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he loves for his servants to imitate him. Now, of course, we can't imitate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the actual sense of the word. But whenever we reflect a quality from the qualities and attributes of Allah, the closer we are to Allah. Because his qualities are qualities of perfection. His qualities are uh, qualities of beauty. <coughs> and all qualities that are contrary to his qualities are satanic. And so whenever somebody lies, whenever somebody cheats, whenever somebody oppresses, whenever somebody deceives, uh, that person imitates the shaitan. And that person is distanced, uh, is distanced from... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when somebody when somebody has something that uh, somebody has money somebody has knowledge uh, somebody has uh, guidance somebody has wisdom and somebody has generosity they're characterized by generosity they love to share what they have they love to share what they have and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, only creates what he loves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, contrary to, uh, to a, very, uh, a, a very erroneous uh, narrative or theory, that Allah creates things that he hates. No, why would he create them when he's the ahkamul hakimin, is the wisest of the wise. He creates what he loves. And what he loves, he wishes for them to uh, gain a share, a portion, uh, or to reflect. These are all synonymous terms. Uh, Ibn Qayyim al jawzi he said, <coughs> in, he didn't use a portion of Allah. What is our portion of this name? Or what is our share of this divine quality? He said, worshipping Allah through those names, through the attributes. But these are all, the meanings are all the same. So the ways that they express reflecting Allah's Div uh, uh, divine qualities, reflecting the divine qualities, these are all synonymous. They're all synonymous. So we, we don't get hung up on the terminology because the meaning is all one in the end. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves for his attributes to be reflected in his creation. And they compete. But there are only two creations, two uh, species or genuses or forms of uh, creation who can compete in this regard they're the only two with free will and they are mankind and the jinn and all the other creations in the heavens and the earth the angels wh what do we know from the creations we know angels we know the buraq for example that carried the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam we know the animals we know the plants we know uh, we know microorganisms, the living organisms on the face of this planet, at least. We know, uh, we know the universe and everything within it and what is beyond. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never ceases to create because he said, وَيَخْلُقُ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ And he creates that which you do not know of. And creates is a present tense verb. And the present tense verb in Arabic, it denotes continuity 
It means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never ceases to create. And everything Allah ta'ala, he, everything which Allah ta'ala creates, surrenders and submits to him, uh, uh, um, uh, surrenders and submits to him involuntarily because they did not choose to, uh, uh, they did not choose to bear the trust. And the trust is the free will. And so two species or two creations compete in reflecting Allah's qualities. They are mankind and the jinn. And from among mankind and the jinn, there are shayateen. And by the way, the shaytan is a quality. It's an attribute. It's not a name. It's not a noun. But when somebody becomes, when somebody becomes synonymous with the qualities of a shaytan, which is rebellion, then they are described as a shaytan. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala confirms for us in Surah An-Nas, قُلْ عَذُبُ رَبِّ النَّاسِ مَلِكِ النَّاسِ إِلَهِ النَّاسِ مِنْ شَرِّ الْوَسْوَاسِ الْخَنَّاسِ الَّذِي يُوَسْوِسُ فِي صُدُورِ النَّاسِ مِنَ الْجِنَّةِ وَالنَّاسِ We seek refuge in Allah, yes, from the concealed and the hidden whisperer who, who whispers into the breasts of mankind, yes, مِنَ الْجِنَّةِ وَالنَّاسِ from the jinn and mankind, meaning that there are those who inspire and they, uh, they, uh, uh, um, they incite evil, be them from the jinn or be them from mankind. And there are shayateen, as the Rasul said in the blessed hadith, that there are shayateen from the jinn and shayateen from man. And so, and so those who who deviate from the qualities of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they rebel, yes, they rebel, meaning they become shayateen and harmful, yes, they, ha they, take, uh, they take upon themselves qualities of evil. And Allah wa ta'ala is not characterized by evil. And Allah didn't create that evil, they chose it for themselves. Because when you deviate from the qualities of Allah, when you deviate from the qualities of Allah, then whatever you have deviated from, it will, it will be from a divine, perfect, beautiful quality to a evil, satanic quality. Because it's, 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 it's evil only, by, uh, uh, only relative to its opposite. We know it's evil because, because when you left the perfection, you went to imperfection. This was just a brief introduction to add on and to continue the introduction that we gave a couple of weeks ago on reflecting the qualities of Allah. And so when we learn the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his attributes and his qualities, it's not for us to say Allah, Allah, when we hear the manifestations of those names. But it's for us to, of course, recognize these attributes, recognize their manifestations, and then embody them, reflect them in our character. Today, we have two names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which are complementary names. And from Allah wa ta'ala's names, some of the names are coupled, are brought together because the scholars consider that one results in the other. And so they're complementary. And today's two names are Ad-Dar and al nafiah Ad-Dar is the distresser, the afflictor, the punisher. And al nafiah is the benefiter, the auspicious, the creator of all good. Al nafiah is the one who brings you benefit, brings you good. And Ad-Dar is the one who brings harm. And we're going to explain how can Allah, when we said no evil is attributed to Allah, so why does Allah, why is Allah characterized by this attribute of Ad-Dar? Now, of course, all of Allah's names are beautiful. We need to remember that. They're perfect. And what may appear to you in the beginning as, uh, as, uh, uh, as negative or as, uh, or, 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 naam, as negative, it is only due to a shortcoming in your, in your vision in your perception, not in the reality of what you're observing. So the reality, of course, the reality of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names and attributes, only He knows. 
the reality, the, the essence and the, 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 the complete understanding because we will never encompass Allah uh, in knowledge. We will ne our knowledge will never encompass every aspect of Allah. It's impossible because Allah is infinite and we're finite. And so we're only exposed to aspects of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's qualities. And as we said, Allah, uh, we've said before, Allah's names and His attributes are infinite because He is infinite. But He has revealed to us what, what is relevant to us in this life. We need, to, we need to remember that. Yes? Because there are things that are not relevant to us in this life and things beyond our comprehension and our understanding. And that's why He has concealed it from us now. Tayyib. Allah calls himself or is characterized by this sifa of Ad-Dar, Ad-Dar who is the distresser, the one who harms. Now medicine, medicine by nature is bitter, but, but it's beneficial and Allah only harms to benefit. We open with this and we'll close with it and we'll continue to mention it throughout today's lesson. Allah harms to benefit. Be I, I previously gave the analogy, and, and I love this analogy, which uh, Shaykh Muhammad Ratib al-Nabulsi gives uh, quite often, the analogy of <coughs> the child who's taken to a dentist. The child who's taken to a dentist for fillings or for a tooth to be pulled out. Now that child goes in, before they go in, they sit in reception, you, we've all watched the movies, right? where they hear the drills and they hear, you know, uh, they hear, you know, uh, 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 movement and like as though there's a fight going on in the, in the, in the surgery and, uh, and they're scared and then they go in and they see, you know, uh, as though it's a torture chamber with all, this all of these apparatus set up and they think where they're going to be dissected and cut up and, and they're afraid and they lie down and they're helpless Huh? And then the dentist starts prodding and poking their mouth with sharp metal objects. Now an adult, you know, cringes and is scared. A child screams and shouts and cries and, and will, uh, will lash out and tell his mum and dad, I hate you. All of that. All of that. But what they're doing, that harm, it's perceived by the child because the child is still immature. The child has perceived this uh, medical treatment as harm, it's torture. Why am I being punished? What have I done? But in fact, it's for their benefit. It's for their benefit. Now that child grows up and matures and then remembers that, ah, I remember how I reacted when I was little. I remember that it was actually good for me. I'm a, I know now that I need this. And so when they come up, you know, uh, they, 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 they need, they need a, a, a procedure, they go to the dentist, and what do they do? They, they tolerate the pain and they're patient. They tolerate that pain patiently. And then afterwards, with half their mouth drooping, and they can barely speak, and they're in pain. One side is numb, the other side is, is aching, huh? and they can barely walk, right? They say to the doctor, thank you. <laughs> they thank the doctor, right? And so why is it that they thank the doctor? Because they've realized the reality of this harm and pain. What was it for? What was it all for? It's for their benefit. And so Allah, we need to realize that we need to realize that there is no analogy that is fitting, that, that, that uh, befits Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's majesty. But these analogies are just for us to understand a concept. That's it. To understand and approximate a concept. And without these analogies, we wouldn't understand the concept. And that's why Allah ta'ala in the Qur'an, the Qur'an is full of analogies. It's full of analogies in order for us to understand these concepts. But in reality, Allah Ta'ala is far above these, uh, these concepts and that's why Allah, these analogies. And that's why He says, 
وَلِلَّهِ الْمَثَلُ الْأَعْلَى Allah Ta'ala says, and to Allah, is, uh, 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 and to Allah belongs the greatest example, meaning no, no example comes close to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala. But these are just for us to approximate the, 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 the concept. So we see here how something that is harmful, its, its true nature is to benefit. Its true nature is to benefit, but it depends on what? Depends on perspective. طيب. And, and, and so, similarly, uh, uh, we said that the adult patient will be grateful and thank, and thank the doctor. Similarly, the believer, on the day of judgment, when the believer sees the outcome of all of the trials and the tests, they will surrender and submit and prostrate out of gratitude to Allah, uh, gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is, this is the quality, the overwhelming quality and the overwhelming condition and state of the believers in paradise. Gratitude. And that's why Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, he said, uh, Naam. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمْلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ يَهْدِيهِمْ رَبُّهُمْ بِإِيمَانِهِمْ Indeed those who believed and did righteous deeds يَهْدِيهِمْ اللَّهُ بِإِيمَانِهِمْ Allah guides them with their iman, by their iman. They believed and because of that belief Allah guides them. يَهْدِيهِمْ رَبُّهُمْ بِإِيمَانِهِمْ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهِمُ الْأَنْهَارُ فِي جَنَّاتِ النَّعِيمِ Rivers flow from beneath them in the gardens of Eden or in the gardens of bliss. دَعْوَاهُمْ فِيهَا سُبْحَانَكَ اللَّهُمَّ Their statement within it is, uh, is uh, uh, Glory be to Allah and praise دَعْوَاهُمْ فِيهَا سُبْحَانَكَ اللَّهُمَّ Naam Their statement within it, within paradise is uh, glory and exaltation to Allah سُبْحَانَكَ اللَّهُمَّ وَتَحِيَّتُهُمْ فِيهَا سَلَامٍ And their salutations within it Within paradise is salam, is peace. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَاهُمْ أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ And their final statement is الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Praise be to Allah, Lord of the worlds. And, and the end of Surah Ghafir. وَتَرَى الْمَلَائِكَةَ حَافِّينَ مِنْ حَوْلِ الْعَرْشِ And you will see the angels surrounding the throne, the throne of majesty. The uh, uh, and the throne of the divine Jalla Jalalu. وَتَرَى الْمَلَائِكَةَ حَافِّينَ مِنْ حَوْلِ الْعَرْشِ يُسَبِّحُونَ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّهِمْ Glorifying the praises of their Lord. وَقُضِيَ بَيْنَهُمْ, في, uh, وقضي بينهم بِالْحَقِّ And, uh, and uh, the matter will be settled or judged between them with truth. وَقِيلَ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ And it will be said, or وَقِيلَ is past tense, and it is said, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. And Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, He said, Na'am, wa akhiru da'awahum an alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. So this is, this, this is the condition of those who will see, ev see that all of the trials and the difficulties that we went through in life, all of the, 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 the adrar, the harms and the afflictions and the difficulties and the hardships, they were just temporary. They, it was nothing compared to, it's nothing. I mean, anything, you know, any finite period of time or anything that is finite compared to what is infinite, there's no comparison between the two. The, the finite is, 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 is not just negligible, it is as though it didn't exist. But gratitude should start in this life. Gratitude should start in this life. And gratitude can only be attained through a realization that Allah does not harm except to benefit. He is a darrun nafi'ah. He is the afflictor or the, the distresser, but he is a nafi'ah. And uh, a nafi'ah, he is the benefitor, the, the bringer of good and, 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 and the auspicious. And so he, he harms to bring the good, to bring the good. A man was uh, doing tawaf. Uh, circulating the, the, the Kaaba and was saying, Oh Allah, are you pleased with me? And so behind him was Al Imam al Shafi'i, the great, the great, uh, the great scholar 
uh, of Islam and, and, and the great jurist uh, who, who formulated a legal school of thought which is followed until today. One of the four legal schools of thought and the second most, uh, in fact, the second most followed legal school, meaning just in terms of the, the numbers of people, the countries and their population sizes which follow it. For example, you've got like Indonesia, which is the most populous Muslim country. The whole country follows this legal school of thought. <coughs> he said to him, and are you pleased with Allah for him to be pleased with you? So the man turned around and he said, who are you? May Allah have mercy on you. How can I be pleased with my Lord? How can I be pleased with my Lord? He said, he said, you'll be pleased with your Lord when, uh, when the, your happiness, when your happiness at the affliction is equal to your happiness at the blessing. So when you are equally happy, equally pleased when you are afflicted and when you are uh, and when you attain prosperity both of them are uh, they're, 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 they're two and the same thing they're two and one there's no difference wealth comes I'm happy poverty comes I'm happy but how is that so when you are when when you're when those two are the same then you've become pleased with Allah and when you're pleased with Allah Allah will be pleased with you uh, now, now, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, in this lifetime, we said that uh, we said that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, He harms to benefit, and He gives us a story in the Quran in Surah Al Qalam, uh, the, the the chapter chapter sixty eight of. Um, Ashabul Jannah. Ashabul Jannah are the owners of a farm, or the owners of a garden, but rather it's a farm. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says to us, إِنَّا بَلَوْنَاهُمْ كَمَا بَلَوْنَا أَصْحَابَ الْجَنَّةِ إِذْ أَقْسَمُوا لَيَصْرِمُنَّهَا مُصْبِحِينَ Indeed, we tested them, the, the, the people, as we tested the owners of the garden, who swore an oath that they will cut the fruits during the morning and they will leave nothing because they didn't want to give they don't want to give the poor anything a share the zakah because the poor are owed a share of the harvest uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has, has assigned that and has allotted for them a share in the form of zakah فَطَافَ عَلَيْهَا طَائِفٌ مِنْ رَبِّكَ وَهُمْ نَائِمُونَ And so a wind or an affliction came upon it while they were asleep, their crops. فَأَصْبَحَتْ كَالصَّرِيمُ And so it became as though it was uh, uh, consumed and destroyed. فَتَنَادَوْ مُصْبِحِينَ So they called one another during the morning. Uh, during the morning. أَنِغْدُوا عَلَى حَرْثِكُمْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَارِمِينَ go, go, go during the morning. Let's go during the morning to our crops. If we are to, if we are to harvest them. فَانْطَلَقُوا وَهُمْ يَتَخَافَتُونَ So they left while they lowered their voices. Why? So that the poor people don't hear them going to harvest their crops. أَلَّا يَدُخُلَنَّهَا الْيَوْمَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِسْكِينَ Today no poor person will enter our garden to, to ask for their share of the harvest. وَغَدَوْ عَلَى حَرْضٍ قَادِرِينَ And so they went, in the, went during the morning determined determined to, uh, uh, to harvest and not give the poor. So when they saw it, they said, surely we're lost. They didn't recognize this land as theirs. Such was the destruction. Even the landmarks around it are different. They said, surely we're lost. Then they realized, no, actually we've become, de we're deprived. Meaning Allah has deprived us of, of our crops and of our harvest. The moderate one among them, huh? so the one who was, uh, the one who was, uh, had some fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, didn't I tell you, should you not exalt, meaning exalt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? قَالُوا سُبْحَانَ رَبِّنَا إِنَّا كُنَّا ظَالِمِينَ They said, glory be to Allah, indeed we have been, we have been, we have been wrong. Yes, 
we've done wrong. فَأَقَبَلَ بَعْضُهُمْ عَلَى بَعْضٍ يَتَلَوَمُونَ So they started to blame one another. قَالُوا يَا وَيْلَنَا إِنَّا كُنَّا طَاغِينَ Then they realized and they said, woe to us, we were all in error. We were all in error. عَسَى رَبُّنَا أَنْ يُبَدِلَنَا خَيْرًا مِّنْهَا إِنَّا إِلَى رَبِّنَا رَاغِبُونَ They said, perhaps, Allah, perhaps our Lord will compensate us what is better than it. Indeed, we are desirous uh, of our Lord. And here is the word I want to get to. Because this story has to connect to the, the, the name, الضَّرُّ nafia or the names. Allah says, كَذَلِكَ العذاب. Such is the punishment. The punishment of the dunya, of this world. Because Allah says, كَذَلِكَ العذاب وَلَا عَذَابُ الْآخِرَةِ أَكْبَرُ لَوْ كَانُوا يَعْلَمُونَ But the punishment of the hereafter is greater if only they knew. كَذَلِكَ العذاب such is the punishment. We need to know that uh, Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, when He sends punishment upon us in this life, when He sends punishment upon a people during this life, it is to deter them. It is to push them back to the path. And Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, what He does, and, and His, uh, uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, these actions, they are characterized by absolute wisdom. Allah, we need to know that, uh, as they say, uh, as they say, كُلُّ شِدَّةٍ وَرَأَهَا شَدَّةٍ Shidda is hardship. Shadda means pull. And notice how uh, there's just a difference in the casing, in the first vowel. Yes, shidda means hardship. And shadda means pull. Behind every shiddah, behind every hardship, there's a shadda, there is a pull towards Allah. And they say, uh, And here there are the noon and the ha are swapped and the meaning is changed. Every mihna, every trial, every calamitous trial, behind it there is a minha, there is a gift. But Again, it's a matter of perspective and waiting and seeing. And so everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does is characterized by absolute wisdom. Regardless of who the actor huh, in, the, in, 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 the, in the, 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 the narrative or in the film before you is. Whether they are intelligent or whether they are foolish. Whether they are pious or whether they are... Uh, or, or whether they are, um, whether they're evil, whether they're righteous or wretched, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who the actors are. Yes, it doesn't matter who the actors are. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, who's the producer behind this entire movie, yes, and behind this this uh, this uh, this play, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala wants good. He wants good because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala only wants good. Anyway. Now, <clears throat> when do we then fall into, when do we feel weak? When do we perform, uh, fall into hypocrisy? When do we feel fear? When we assume that uh, harm and benefit is, is uh, in the hands of those other than Allah. When we think that somebody can benefit us or harm us, then, if we, if we think that somebody will harm us, our fear is directed towards them. Redirected from Allah and towards the creation. Who they themselves cannot benefit or harm themselves uh, inherently. Now, what, what does that mean? Because obviously that's, people, it's, it, it sounds nice, but what does that really mean? Right? Because obviously everybody has free will and everyone has the power to do something. I get up, I can hit someone, someone can get up and can hit me. So I do have the power to, I do have the power to harm and I do have the power to benefit. We need to understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the true fa'il. The fa'il means that the one who, 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 who uh, affects the action, the action and the deed can only happen by Allah's will and He's the one who does it. We are just causes. We are means. We're means. And the means, Allah Wa Ta'ala can stop the mean from, 
functioning. And we have plenty of stories. We said, well, I do have the power. I have the power to cut myself. But the knife does not inherently possess that quality to cut. It cuts by the will of Allah, by the permission of Allah. Hence, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded Ibrahim to slaughter his son, Ismail, and he placed the knife on his neck and began to, began to, uh, uh, and he moved it to cut, the, the knife didn't cut. So, the, 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 Allah tabarak wa ta'ala suspended its, suspended its function because he created that function and it only functions the knife the, the the instrument only functions when Allah gives it permission to and in this case Allah didn't give it permission Ibrahim himself was cast into the fire the fire burns we all know that fire burns but fire is an instrument if you like its function of burning heating or burning when there's direct contact yes is only by the permission of Allah. And when Allah removes that permission, it doesn't burn. And so when Ibrahim was thrown into the fire, Allah said, Ya naru, kuni bardan wa salaman ala Ibrahim. O fire, be cool and peaceful for Ibrahim. Allah Ta'ala didn't give it permission to burn. And so we need to understand that we are instruments. We do not possess the inherent power to do anything, to benefit or to harm, to inflict dar, which is harm, or naf'a, benefit, except by the permission of Allah. Uh, and that's why the, the scholars of, of, of Tawheed and Aqeedah, they say, عِنْدَهَا لَا بِهَا They summed it up. They said, at it, not by it. The pen writes, that function of this instrument, yes, that function works at the point where this instrument operates. At it, عندها, لابها, not by it, meaning it does not, it does not possess the power to determine and to give it and to permit for itself Permission to function. Is that understood? And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the one who gives permission and He is the one who removes permission. So nothing benefits and nothing harms except by Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala's leave. And so if He is the one who gives permission and takes permission, and He gives permission and He denies permission, so who is the one who benefits and who is who's the one who who actually has the power to benefit and to harm? None but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now. Now, dur, which is harm, linguistically is the opposite to nafa, which is benefit. They are opposite only linguistically. The reality is not the case. They're not opposite in reality. Allah harms to benefit. And once again, we give another analogy. It's exa exactly the same as the first one. But this time, it's a father. A father who's a surgeon. Incredibly skilled. Top of his profession. Heart full of mercy. And his daughter has appendicitis. She is screaming in pain. Yes? And he has to save her. Now, she thinks maybe if the boo-boo is kissed or wiped, it will go. Right? Small. She doesn't understand. Her father doesn't have access, right? Doesn't have access to anesthetic to put her under. Her father gets a knife out in front of her, cuts her open takes out the appendix, stitches her back up. She remains in pain afterwards, 
due to the effect of, uh, due to bruising at the site of the surgery. And even if she was under, people still need to recover from general anesthetic, right? If he leaves her in that condition, she dies. And so the mercy is to inflict more pain on her. The mercy is to inflict more pain on her. She does not comprehend that. She can't understand that. Not at her age. When she's older, she'll understand it. And so the believer, the believer withstands the trials with patience. With patience. Because the believer realizes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not impoverish except to give and to give something better than what the person was deprived they think it's deprivation okay uh, but the, uh, as the scholars say that a deprivation is in uh, deprivation is in fact the truth of deprivation is ata is giving and blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's the gift itself Allah, the believer realizes that Allah does not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not cause somebody to be diseased or sick except for them to be healthy in another uh, 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 healthy in uh, spiritually uh, y yesterday now yesterday or the day before uh, my friend's uh, wife's grandmother died and I was uh, I sent him a message uh, of condolences and then met him and he said this is a ni'mah, a blessing from Allah because why? because she was ill, she was old but she was ill for such a long time and so the believer uh, the sickness uh, and, 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 and poor health is a blessing from Allah because with observe, with, while observing patience, the sins are all erased. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take his servant once all of their sins are erased. And not just the, the sins are erased. Patience, patience qualifies the person for elevation in rank. In stations with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if somebody just drops dead, okay. If somebody drops dead, they didn't have that opportunity to repent, to give back the rights which they the rights of others which they took, to ask people for forgiveness if they wronged them, huh? And 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 therefore the Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam he sought refuge in Allah from sudden death. People look at sudden death and go, ah. Oh. People look at the diseased and the sick and they say, ah, oh, I'd much rather. You know, people say things like. Oh, I'd much rather a bullet to the head. Yeah, but when, when will you repent? When will your slate be cleaned? Yes? So there that harm, why does Allah do this to people? Why does... That harm is for good. Now, also the believer realizes that Allah does not, does not cause fear except for his servant to turn to him for refuge. Allah wants us to turn to him, to ask for safety and security from him. Security from the true, uh, from the true uh, damnation, which is in the hereafter, not in this life. This is a, a, this is, this is a tiny chapter in a, in, in a voluminous novel. Not even a chapter. This is like a tiny footnote in a huge, infinite in fact, because we had a beginning, yes, but we don't have an end. None of us have an end. Guys, we're all living forever. Not on this planet. We're all going to live forever. And so, choose your conclusion. And you know what? There's a conclusion, but then there is a sequel. And the sequels never end. Huh? The adventures and the, and the pleasures and the happiness. Huh? And no ink in the world will be enough to write that volume, to write that novel. 
We also have a prequel. We have a prequel. The prequel most people don't know about. That the one thing that remains in us is our spirit, our ruh. Our ruh existed before. And our ruh is given a body in this life. And our ruh is given, a, a spirit is given a, a, another body in the next life. But this spirit is what is immortal. This body isn't. So a neglectful father, a neglectful father, leave the girl to die. A neglectful father looks at his son who, uh, you know, goes out any time befriends anyone he likes, does his homework, doesn't do his homework, doesn't matter. Neglectful father. Ah, boys will be boys. But that boy's going to become a man. And he's, become a fa- he's going to become a failure of a man. He's going to become a failure of a man. And you know what? He's going to be easy prey. He's going to be a sucker for these thieves trying to sell manhood to guys. Yeah? I- in the guise of religion. In the gui- with the veneer of religiosity. A veneer of religiosity. You want to be like the Sahaba? This is how you become like the Sahaba. Who are you not even like a Sahabi? How are you going to teach something you don't have? The neglectful father, the neglectful father, uh, uh, that's neglect. The father at that time, or the, 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 the child, thinks, my dad's so cool, he gives me everything, he lets me do whatever I want. No, your father's neglectful. He has spoilt you, Rotten, meaning he has spoilt you, spoilt, spoiling something, spoiling it, means, means that you've ruined it. And rotten meaning you have rotted, outside and in. You are foul. You're foul due to the actions of your parents. Right? Now what about somebody who, who's strict on their child? Imagine, child... The parent, mum's going through the bag in the school, finds money, calls her son. Where'd you get this money from? I stole it from my friend when he wasn't looking. Tell me what is her reaction going to be? If she says, silly boy, right? When are you going to learn? What has she done? She has enabled him. She has let him off scot-free. He's going to go on to steal from another friend. And then from school. And then from the state. And then from his friends. And he'll steal from his mum. Who enabled him. But if she has any love. Any mercy in her heart. She will punish him. And she'll punish him good. Obviously the punishment is proportionate to the crime. And she won't enjoy it, will she? This is, this is, once again, no analogy, no analogy uh, encompasses Allah's reality. It's just to make us understand the concept. Allah doesn't like punishing us. That's the important thing that we want to understand. Allah doesn't like to punish us. The, the parent might hit their kid and they're in pain. And their pain, their pain is, 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 a, is an emotional pain. And sometimes emotional pain is far greater than physical pain. Because it just goes on and on and on. And it causes physical pain as well. Huh? People age because of the emotional stress. Age. Like beyond their years, of course. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala... You know that that mother who was in pain, who was in pain and didn't enjoy it one bit when she hit her kid because she loves her kid, because she's merciful to her kid. Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala loves us more than our mothers and our fathers will ever love us. Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala is more merciful with us than anyone on the face of this planet will be merciful with us. And, uh, 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 and, as, uh, uh, and as such, doesn't that mean that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't enjoy it? So when you think for a moment that Allah, you know, Allah enjoys this, Allah likes to do this to me, that is a kufri thought. That is a thought of disbelief. 
seek refuge in Allah from the shaitan and perform tawbah, repentance for that thought. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not a sadist. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he purifies us. He purifies us. It would be better that we didn't do the wrong thing to start with. Okay. What about somebody does no wrong? Yeah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inflicts them with diseases and poverty and and and, and there's no security in their lives. Huh? But they're good people. They didn't do anything wrong. They didn't do anything wrong. Now we already said that's why we need to we, we need to see the, the whole picture. We need to see the whole picture. Our our problem, our problem guys, is that the religion has become like a scattered jigsaw puzzle. All the pieces are there. Nobody nobody uh, denies a single piece, rejects a single single piece, but people are struggling to put the pieces together. And so we already said that if you're patient, if you have sabr, Allah will reward you. Huh? So, yeah, your sins are erased. Okay, this person doesn't have his sins. Why are they being punished for? Or why are they? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He wants something better for them. He wants them to rise to a station their good deeds are never gonna, are never gonna make them reach. Allah knows that there is a great deed that they can do, and that is patience. And so, for them to observe patience, for them to practice that good deed, the, a deed which is rewarded without account, meaning without limit, he has to inflict, he has to inflict hardship on them. And so the believer, the believer receives that hardship and realizes this is just, this is a guest who's coming and who's going to leave. A guest coming and will leave. But this guest is coming bearing gifts and fruits and every and money and everything that I can ever want and more. And I will thank them for bringing me all of this. Again, it's a matter of perspective. But when, you know, the lower a person is, the weaker their vision is, the poorer their perspective is. And when I say lower, lower spiritually and lower physically. And, and, and there is a parallel between the two. The ant, if I put this cup in front of an ant, it's a mountain for it. So it's a mountain for it. Huh? But for me, I'll move it around. Oh, there you go. About, you know, a bit careless. That's the only way to fix it. Yeah. Black, alhamdulillah. Uh, so, for me, it's nothing. All of us, that is. Yes? When you look at, when you're at the base of a mountain and you look up and you go, oh, how am I? It's, it's huge. I'm never going to make it to the top, right? It's a matter of perspective. Then when you get to the, pe to the summit, you look around, right? And you see all those other mountains which look huge. Oh, they're so small, right? So there is a parallel between being physically, uh, uh, physically elevated and spiritually elevated as well. When you're spiritually elevated, you look at the trials and you go, oh, they're, so, they're just minor. Minor afflictions during my life, alhamdulillah. And you thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for them. And uh, like the person who makes you climb that mountain, huh? or, you know, and you're struggling and you get blisters. I didn't climb, climb a mountain. You know, it, there's a, a decent route, Tubqal, which is the highest point in North Africa, in Morocco. You know, it's tiring, your knees are aching, your calves are burning, you know, the air is thin. And so you 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 know it's it's laborious to breathe, and your guide is pushing you and helping you, huh? And you see people who are just giving up, and then they're given like they're, they're motivated and incentivized to get to the top. Come on, bro, you came all the way here, all that stuff, right? Okay, and then when they get to the top, those people put them through hell, right? That's what people say, right? They put them through hell. Okay, obviously, that's just figurative. They put them through so much, like they consider it torture. When they get to the top, 
thank you so much. Oh, with my own eyes, I've seen it. I didn't cry like that, okay? But with my own eyes, I've seen it. And we all know stories and we all, you know, even if you don't have a life, you sit and you watch movies and they kind of give you all of these kind of like, you know, these analogies, they all relate, okay? You thank somebody who was prodding and poking and pushing you and, and you can't even breathe. Huh? And then you thank them afterwards. So isn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala worthy of that praise? Tayyib, our, our share of this name or how we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with this name or uh, how we reflect this quality, as, as we said, they're all synonymous. The believer has to be beneficial to the creation. The believer has to be beneficial to the creation. Muslim, non-Muslim, uh, 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 monotheist, idolater, righteous, wretched, uh, plants, animals, the environment, the believer has to be beneficial. He has to be a source of benefit. He and she, of course, has to be a a source of benefit to everyone and everything because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is beneficial benefits everyone and everything and uh, the harm though how can you be dar? we gave some examples of the parents yes but also to not go near those who would cause you harm to not go near those to not deliberately go near people, yes, who will cause you harm because you will cause, you will bring that, you're the reason for that harm. Now, it's not like, you know, uh, uh, blaming the, 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 the victim of bullying. I don't mean that. I don't, that, that person's innocent. Bullies go look for people to bully, right? But somebody going, going to, uh, when we're talking about harm, meaning that you put yourself in a compromising situation. You go to a place where you will be exposed to harms because it's, it's a harmful environment. So the harm that's inflicted on you, whether it be through sins or whether it be physical harm, you brought it on yourself. Yes? So don't, uh, 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 the, 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 from, from the share of the same is not, to go, uh, is not to go anywhere where harm would be caused. And also, how do we worship Allah wa ta'ala through his name? Adar and the Nafi'a. It is to not have hopes, not place hopes in anyone but Allah. To not fear anyone but Allah. To not rely upon anyone except Allah. And whoever knows that Allah is his Lord and he is the only one who brought him into existence and he is the only one who confers his favor and bless blessings upon him, entrusts Allah with all of their affairs. And in doing so, they live a happy life. And the creation will all live a happy and settled life. And this is the key to happiness, the true happiness. The true happiness is not good vibes. It's not good vibes. The true happiness is only attained through that perspective. Perspective that everything is good for me because it's from Allah. And if everything's good for you, then you're happy. And that is the state of the believer, which the Rasul said, Ajaban li amri mu'min. Amazing is the is the affair of the believer. Inna amrahu kullahu lahu khair. All of his affairs are good for him. And that is for nobody but nobody but the believer. If he is touched with uh, prosperity, he's grateful. And that was good for him. And if he is touched with, uh, uh, with affliction, he is patient and that is good for him. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of the believers whose affairs, all of their affairs are good for them. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from the patient and make us from the grateful. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make a, uh, transform our patience into gratitude so that we, so that we are of the Hamideen and of the Shakirin, the grateful and the pra and, and, and those who give praise in this life before the next. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen.